And I'm Jeffrey Brown from the PBS NewsHour. And now, changing direction, we are turning to Harlan Coben, a hugely popular mystery thriller writer. Welcome to you. Thanks, Jeff. Nice and to be here, And your new man. book is Home. Yeah. Right? You brought back one of your main characters and a 10-year-old mystery for him to face. Yeah. Tell us, tell well, it's us been, why. It's been six years since I wrote my last Myron Bolotar novel. Yeah. So it was kind of fun to age him and change him and see where he is. And Home is about, you know, I've, I love stories, uh, I've seen a lot of good stories with a missing kid. Um, where one kid goes missing, he's six years old and he comes back when he's 16. Yeah. But in this case, two kids go missing and only one comes home. Yeah. So what ha what's the strain on both families? The strain for the kid who returns, the strain for the kid who's still missing, and how can we kind of solve the mystery of what happened to the other you kid? You said you like to bring this character back. I yeah. mean, is there a, is there, when, when does that happen? It wasn't when you were writing the first, the earlier one. No, well, what ha what it is, is I think of an idea first. Some yeah. authors start with a character. Yeah. I start with an idea. Yeah. And then I say, who's going to tell that story? Oh, really? And if it's Myron, then he'll tell it. And if not, and over the last uh, 16 years, it's only been Myron four times out of the last 17 novels. Yeah. So if it's, you know, if it's for him, he tells it. Otherwise, I won't force it. I don't want to return him for the wrong reason. You know, I don't want to return him in the literary equivalent of the Harlem Globetrotters visits Gilligan's Island. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So I want to make sure it's the right vehicle. But when you say you, you start with an idea, yep. I mean, how formed, how, how big is that idea or how formed is that idea? It's actually fairly, f when I start a book, um, I know the beginning and I know the ending. I know almost nothing in between. I compare it to driving it from my home state of New Jersey across the country to California. Yeah. I make a Route 80. Chances are I'll go via the Suez Canal or stop in Tokyo, but I pretty much always end up in LA. Yeah. So once I know that beginning and the end, then the question is, well, who's going to tell this story? And the man, woman, age, or whatever, and that's when that, the lead character starts to come to me. So in this one, as you say, a disappearance yeah. uh, over 10 years, yeah. and then the, the, the name of home is how does one get right. home, right? So you knew the beginning and you knew the end? Yes. Were there surprises? What was the biggest surprise in the middle? There was a ton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't really, I, know, I don't go too far knowing where I'm going. I yeah. love to twist and turn. It's, yeah. uh, it's my thing, so, um, and I love those moments when I'm actually kind of gasping along with it. So there was, Does there that was happen a often to you? Fairly often, yeah. yeah I'm even, all the, even all this time In fact, later. I recently reread it and I was completely fooled by the ending. So no. <laughs> 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 but uh, you know, the book opens, the very first line is the boy who's been missing 10 years was right across the street. Right. So right away the character is about to try to rescue at least one of those yeah. two boys mm -hmm. and things go wrong. And that's, that's, where, that's when the surprises start. And, 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 and in thinking through the middle, do you, do you write the beginning and, and then write the end and then fill it in, or do you? No. No. I write, I, I write in order. I, I um, hope that all these process questions are no, okay. No, it's great. It's no, I think interesting that's a, with hope, the way you're talking I about it. I hope it's interesting for people. Yeah, yeah. And you know, if you ask, uh, as you know, because you've been inter interviewed a million writers, Jeff, yeah. if you ask 10 writers how they do it, you'll get 11 different answers. I know, I know. So knowing know. that, the, um, the key, of course, is just to write. Yeah. No matter what makes you write. And this is how I always divide it. If, it's, if it makes you write, good. If it doesn't make you write, bad. That's, that's it. Period. Period. Applied to everything in life? Pretty much, yes. <laughs> everything. So, but I usually, you know, um, E.L. Doctorow had a great quote on writing where he said yeah. that writing is like driving at night in the fog with just yeah. your headlights yeah. on. You can only see a little bit ahead of you, but you can make the whole journey that way. The only thing I would add is I know where the journey is going to end. So, well, now you've got me curious about yeah. what's in the good category that makes you write. <laughs> I mean, aside from the writing yeah. itself, what kinds of, I mean, is, is there music? Are you watching television? Is it a walk in the woods? Is it, you got to be alone? What, what well, it's funny, um, most of the writers that you probably will meet today have a, a certain ritual. They yeah. cer I, my ritual is to have no ritual. I do what works until it stops working, yeah. and then I find something else. It's like yeah. I ride the horse, the horse dies, I look for another horse. So some days I'm writing in the morning, some days I'm writing in the evening. Huh. I'll find a Starbucks that's working and right there. I'll find a library spot and I'll keep working there until it stops working and then I'll look for someplace else. So now thinking about after all the, all the books you've written, what does, it have, what does a book have to have? You know, what does a thriller have to have besides thrills? Or right. what, how do you define the thrill? I don't really, you know, I don't know, and I hate categorizing, because I don't, I don't know either, um, but I try to write, uh, the greatest advice I ever heard on writing is from Elmore Leonard, yeah. and he says, I try to cut out all the parts you'd normally skip. 
Yeah. Which is genius advice, right? And but I, I try to write as though there's a knife against my neck, and if I bore you, I'm done. Doesn't mean I can't have themes or descriptions, but even those have to be gripping. Mm -hmm. And the way I think to do it is, you know, it's through plot and story, but if you don't care about the character, it's like having the greatest car in the world, but you don't have any gasoline for yeah. it. You have to have both, it just and won't work. And you know it when you see it at this point? I like think did so. Did you always? Um, maybe not, I don't <laughs> know, but <laughs> I think a thriller has to have heart for yeah. it to last. I yeah. mean, you have to, if you don't care about the people, you're just not going to bother reading it. It's not going to stay with you. I want the ending of Home, I want you maybe to shed a little bit of a tear. I want you to be genuinely moved. And if you're not, I haven't done my job. Yeah. It's interesting, though, that you say, of course, character and plot have to be there ultimately. But right. you start by saying that you don't start with character. It's right. the idea and which character is going to tell it. Right. It's still a chicken and egg question. Yeah. Obviously, you have to have yeah, both. Yeah. Yeah. But for me, I normally am trying to find a really cool scenario. And then I'm figuring out who is going to tell that story. And when Myron came back this time, when you realized he was the right guy, yeah. and as you said, he's a little older, yeah. right? So are you kind of reimagining him yeah. or, yes? Well, I try it. My first Myron Bolotar book, which came out in 1995, was called Deal Breaker. Yeah. Myron was about 28. In Home, he's about 45. Yeah. And so it, I didn't want it to be a series like Herqual Poirot or Sherlock Holmes, where he yeah. didn't age or change. Right. The problem with it is, is that I always want it to be personal. How many catharsis can a man go through before he's unrealistic to write about? So yeah. I've written 11 of them over the course of uh, over 20 years now, and then I fill them in with the standalones like Tell No One and yeah. that sort of thing. You know, I've been trying to ask people, to writers today, because of course we're at a big festival of right. books and literature and all, how did you come to this? Um, how did you, what was your, what was your own reading as a kid? Uh, my favorite books as a kid were, unfortunately most of them are cliche sh cliches, they're Madeline Langell's Wrinkle in Time yeah, series, yeah. must still for kids. Some reason cliches are good. Yeah, I know, yeah. it's, it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's still unbelievable yeah. read, I still yeah. read every once in a while. C.S. Lewis's Narnia series, yeah, yeah. a book called The Forgotten Door by Alexander Key and Roald Dahl, especially when I was a kid, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And yeah. you talk about suspense, if you remember that book, yes. when you, you want him so badly to find that golden ticket. Do you remember how badly you wanted him? Yeah. That's, that's what a story is about, that you just want this kid to find that ticket so badly. You can really learn a lesson, even then, about what works. And, and when did you decide to write? I was a little, I came to a little later. I know most of the writers kn know when they're like a fetus. Yeah. But um, no, you <laughs> I find hear different stories, I don't know. I was in college and I was working summers, a job overseas, mm. um, where I was a tour guide for Americans in Spain. And I said, wow, I'd love to write a, a book about this. And yeah. the book was terrible. Yeah. It was pretentious and pompous and self-absorbed. But then I got the bug and I started to write what I love, which I call the novel of immersion. Hopefully home is the book you take on vacation. You don't want to leave your hotel room because you have to know. Right. 10 o'clock at night, just going to read 10 pages, it's four in the morning. That's the kind of book I've always wanted to write. Take it on vacation and don't leave your hotel. That's and you're yeah. a little annoyed that why did I pay for all that money? Exactly. <laughs> but you're happy. But you're deliriously <laughs> happy still about it. <laughs> you know, the other thing I've, I've been interested in here, especially at a festival, because I walk around mm -hmm. and I see, you know, they've got this fiction over here and they've got mystery over here and they've got, you know, poetry. The genre thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, do you accept the tags? Do you care about the kind of boxes that you see in a bookstore or in a place like this? Or? I do and I don't. I yeah. mean, um, I just want people to read it. So a yeah. writer without a reader is a man who claps with one hand. Yeah. So the reader's the other hand, and this is the great thing about meeting readers. So I don't really worry about, you know, <laughs> thankfully my genre, if you will, sells a lot of books. Yeah. So if that helps get people to read it, great. If it doesn't, I'm against it. Now, I, I just saw uh, in looking yesterday, I think, Julia Roberts is going to star in one of your books, Fool Me Once. Yeah. I'm That's writing the screenplay fun. now. Yeah. Oh, you're really writing the screenplay? I'm actually writing it oh, myself I didn't know for that. the first That's time. Yeah. yeah. No, actually, uh, it was the strangest thing. Fool Me Once came out in March. Yeah. And about two days after it came out, I got a call saying, uh, Julia Roberts wants to talk to you tomorrow. Are you free? I'm like, yeah, I can fit her in my, my busy schedule. And she really got the character, and it was really wonderful to talk to her. And uh, we thought that I should be the one to write it for her. So I'm finishing it up now, looking forward to it. And what's the experience like of writing? Writing, taking the book, and. It's. It's interesting, you know, you, it's, a, it's a different way of, of doing it where you have Actually, to make I things visual. Actually, I don't know, visual. have you done this before? Have you I've, I mean, I have, two, I have two overseas TV series that yeah. I do. I have one in England and one in France. Yeah. But it's the first time I've written, uh, adapted one of my own books. Yeah. And yeah. it's been very interesting to go back and try to find ways to be visual with the storytelling rather than going interior into somebody's head. Yeah. 
70 million books sold, I read. That's what they tell me. That's what they tell me. That's pretty damn amazing. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. So, yes. so what's and the secret? And I pinch myself. Yeah. I don't know. Um, other than trying to tell the best story that I can, yeah. making sure it's a thriller with heart, making sure I'm keeping you up at night yeah. um, and, and gripping you, and uh, hopefully adding something a little more than that, hopefully engaging your mind in some way, letting you see the world in a way you're not really expecting in a thriller. That's what I think is working. And we just have about 30 seconds, but I've yeah. also been asking people, you're a reader, <laughs> still yep. a reader. You want to make any recommendations? Um, there's so many that, um, Right now, I'm reading Bruce Springsteen's Born to Run autobiography. Oh, yes, yes, I just read about uh, it too. I'm a huge Springsteen fan, and what's great is it's not about Born in the USA, it's really about his life, some of his issues that he's had to deal with, um, anxiety, and he's so honest that I, I love every moment of it. Yeah. Harlan Coben's new book is Home. Nice to talk to you. Thanks so much. Right, Thank you for having me on.